Hello everyone. Hello and welcome. Hopefully everything is working all right this time around. If it's not one tech issue, it's another. Seems like I think we got the issues worked out with the sound. Now hopefully we've resolved our issues with streaming, although I will warn you my connection is kind of spotty today. It's not the best connection for a live stream. So bear with me. If things go haywire, I am recording and I'll upload the recording after the broadcast. Thank you all so, so much for joining me. I am, of course, Phaedra. For those of you who are returning to the broadcast, you all know me. I'm the artist and astrologer of Mystic Physics Astrology, and I use Western Sidereal Astrology in my practice. So I read a round chart. I use Western type interpretations, but I use the Fagan Bradley Sidereal Zodiac which is our, our our oldest, the sidereal zodiac is our oldest zodiac in astrology, the one that's been around for the longest. And Fagan Bradley, as one of our previous commenters noted on the last broadcast, is considered to be the most accurate. Uh, Cyril Fagan did some tremendous work to uh, kind of reconcile uh, his zodiac. Mm, having problems. OBS is going to disconnect, and I think that interrupts our live stream. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead, keep on trucking. We'll record it. We'll upload it after the fact and go from there. Thanks, everyone, for uh, being patient with this process. Uh, I'm doing this wirelessly today, so it's not the best. Uh, it all works best if I have um, a hardware internet connection, and I don't I have a wireless connection today, and it's not helping. Anyway, thank you all so much for joining me. And as I was saying, yes, we use the Fagan Bradley Sidereal Zodiac uh, in part because of Cyril Fagan's excellent work in uh, reconciling uh, the Sidereal Zodiac to what the ancient uh, Babylonian astrologers used back in the day from what we know from uh, the records that they left behind. And so you will need to be uh, taking a look at your own chart if you're following along as I review the transits today. You will need to be looking at your Fag and Bradley sidereal natal chart. It's even different from Lahiri by less than a degree, but sometimes that that uh, uh, 53 or so minute difference between Fagan and Bradley and Lahiri can make a difference. Um, and so they are even still a little bit different from each other, even though Lahiri and Fagan and Bradley are very closely related and both are sidereal zodiacs. But thank you for joining me on the broadcast. My aim really, as always, I just want to offer you guidance on how you can use the upcoming transits to your best advantage, prepare for them, get ready and learn to respond to them rather than simply react to what's going on. Uh, and my goal, honestly, is to um, help you reconnect with your soul purpose, help you remember why it is you came into this life to begin with, right? Uh, so thank you for watching me. Please like and share the broadcast. Please consider tagging a friend if you know someone who might benefit from what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, you can follow Mystic Physic on Facebook. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. You can follow us from wherever you spend time on social media. And today what we're going to be doing is kind of recapping where we're at with the current transits. We're going to talk about the recent... Uh, a new moon that we just had in Aquarius. You'll forgive me, my notes are not right on this part of, <laughs> of them. It's still the notes from the last broadcast, which referenced the late February full moon in Leo. We are not there. We're going to be talking about the new moon in Aquarius that we just had a little bit. And we're going to talk about uh, Mars's upcoming out of bounds transit, because there's some things you're going to want to be aware of and kind of keep uh, forefront in your mind as we prepare for that. And then we're going to talk about the coming full moon in Virgo and what you can expect from that full moon. So thank you everyone for joining me today. If you need to look up your sidereal sign placements, you can do that on my website, mysticphysic.com slash sidereal tools. Uh, you check your sidereal rising sign, your sidereal sun sign. Uh, those are probably the two most important um, signs to be aware of, but... When we talk about other houses or other signs, you'll want to be aware of what house they occupy on your own chart. Uh, and sometimes we do discuss specific degrees of specific signs. And so it's helpful to know if you have planets or personal points, uh, things like that at any of those degrees. But welcome, welcome, welcome. First, what we're going to do is recap the current transits. Uh, and kind of give you a sense of where we're at. We just had our new moon in Aquarius on the 13th. That was our first 
new moon of the year with all the planets uh, in apparent forward motion at the same time. Uh, so we're in that window of opportunity. We'll have another new moon, a new moon in Pisces uh, coming up in April to take advantage of as well. Uh, we had Mercury just re-enter Aquarius on March 12th. Keep in mind, he entered Aquarius the first time in late January, on the 26th of January, I believe, uh, before he went retrograde. And his retrograde took him back out, uh, retracing his steps through much of Capricorn, sidereal Capricorn. Well, now he's back in sidereal Aquarius for good. And when he made that re-entry, he was unaspected with the exception of a parallel with the moon. Um, and what I mentioned on the last broadcast uh, is that this particular transit kind of points to family talks or discussions or negotiations uh, or discussions or negotiations involving or about a woman or about a woman, women's roles, right? Um, that there's a possibility for relationship tension. Um, there's potential for conflict and aggression in partnerships. Uh, this is a dynamic that opens up the possibility of real estate negotiations. Um, it's an opportunity to communicate ideas and knowledge when Mercury is moving through Aquarius. It's an, I, it's an opportunity to open up discussions with others in your uh, peer network, uh, with others in your social groups. Uh, it's an opportunity to focus on ways community and society can benefit from our collective action and not just individuals benefiting, right? So this is a great transit, Mercury through Aquarius, for brainstorming radical and novel solutions, okay? So take advantage of that. It's going to last through the end of the month. We also have Venus in Aquarius right now. And Venus just entered Aquarius on the 21st of February, so late last month. And she'll be there through, I believe, the 17th of March. Yes, through the 17th of March. And so when she enters Pisces here coming up uh, in a few days, that's going to be a little bit different energetic expression of Venus. And we'll talk about that here in a moment. But Venus being in Aquarius... Um, this was an opportunity for transformation of your relationship with others and how that can bring value and emotional fulfillment uh, is a, uh, describing a time to destroy and rebuild. Uh, this was a transit that suggested busy public life, shakeups to public perception or status, uh, financial or partnership disruption and instability during Venus's transit of Aquarius, and uh, the possibility of financial disappointments related to other people's resources and how right action may be the tool that you need to engage to overcome this financial disappointment. Um, and then Venus and Aquarius, this was really this trip through anyway, not necessarily every Venus and Aquarius transit, but this trip through was about acting in your own best interest, about taking a leap of faith toward your dream. And that's a dynamic that's going to continue for just a few more days uh, until she moves into Venus or into Venus into Pisces. We're going to talk about that here in a minute. Uh, we also right now have Mars and Taurus that began February 23rd. So again, late last month, it's going to be active energy until uh, Mars leaves Taurus April 15th. So mid month next month. Um, and Mars and Taurus, this transit was really about taking action in your Taurus house uh, to transform circumstances, transform events. Um, experience can have a surprising effect on public image or career in a good way. Uh, I did note that this was a time for plowing and planting, right? Uh, uh, for planting the seeds, for preparing the ground and planting the seeds, uh, setting the stage for gestation, okay? Uh, this Mars in Taurus transit, you're going to want to keep your actions and your motivations secret. Keep those things to yourself until it's the right time to go public with your transformation or the right time to kind of give birth to whatever it is you're gestating. Uh, be taking your actions behind the scenes. Be content with uh, keeping those things out of the public eye for right now because this is a time for preparing. Okay, not for 
publicizing, if that makes sense. Uh, this is also a transit that says don't get too comfortable, right? Remember that comfort can lead to stagnation. And stagnation is a form of atrophy. And atrophy is, is death, right? That's not what we want. And so sometimes it's hard for us to break out of our comfort zones. Sometimes we get so comfortable, we quit pursuing opportunities for growth because we know that when we engage in them or pursue those opportunities, we'll be forced to give up our comforts. Um, sometimes that's necessary. Sometimes discomfort is necessary for growth. Discomfort is how we expand our comfort zones. And the trouble with getting too comfortable is you never know how much more comfortable that larger expanded comfort zone might be. Maybe it'll be more comfortable than the comforts you're clinging to right now. Okay, so don't get too comfortable. Don't ever let yourself get too comfortable with something. Comfort leads to stagnation and stagnation is not your friend. Uh, this is an opportunity to invest in your own metamorphosis while Mars is in Taurus. Take care of your spiritual needs, engage in grounding practices, especially there's a risk of being overly bullheaded and obstinate, and there's a risk of bullying behavior with this transit when Mars is in Taurus. And that's going to intensify coming up here pretty soon when Mars goes out of bounds on the 21st. We're going to talk about that here in just a few short minutes. Uh, we have Mercury, excuse me, Mercury, of course, Jupiter in Capricorn as well only for a little bit longer. He's actually going to move into Aquarius coming up next month. That's part of what we're going to talk about on the next broadcast is uh, Jupiter's entree into Aquarius. And uh, this tour of Jupiter through Capricorn is an opportunity for profound transformation and metamorphosis. It's an opportunity to be focusing on results, on outcomes, and do the outcomes, are the outcomes that you're getting in alignment with the outcomes that you wanted or intended or negotiated because if they're not it's not too late to make a change uh, this was uh, a period where I was uh, underscoring the need to not be satisfied with appearances or perceptions because appearances can be misleading perceptions can be manipulated right appearances can be performative and what you really want to care about is What motivates? What's the intention? Is it genuine underneath? And not so much, what does it look like, right? Because a lot of things can just be theatrical in nature, right? We can, we can succumb to performances, to tricks of the eye, illusions, and there's been a lot of Neptune activity recently, and Neptune is the king of illusion, right? The problem is illusions eventually dissipate. The fog lifts, and then we're able to see reality, and what I don't want is for you to set yourself up for disappointment because you got swept away by something illusory or performative or fake or artificial or superficial that wasn't at the core in the meat of it. Sincere, I guess is the word. There's probably a better word, but I'm drawing a blank on it right now. And then of course, Saturn and Capricorn. We've been talking about that for more than a year now. So Capricorn is where you're being tested. Your Capricorn house is where you're being tested. That's gonna continue for another couple of years. Ugh enjoy. Um, but it's an opportunity to identify weaknesses in the house that Capricorn occupies in your sidereal natal chart and for you to go back and to address those weaknesses to shore them up to make necessary changes before they get tested for real and have an opportunity to fail when you need them not to. Okay. So even being tested by Saturn on his transit of a house or a sign is a valuable thing. It can bring challenge, it can bring difficulty, it can bring delay, but it brings those things for your own best interest, right? Saturn is about learning the tough lessons that last us a lifetime. Okay, so let's talk about 
what we just had happen astrologically. On March 13th, we just had our new moon in Aquarius. It was the first new moon of 2021 with all planets in apparent direct motion, like we talked. Um, now, with Aquarius, we have two rulers to talk about. We have the modern ruler, the traditional ruler. Traditional ruler being Saturn, modern ruler being Uranus. And as I mentioned on the last broadcast, when we have co-rulers like this of a newer full moon, or even any chart really, I like to have a look at both of them and see what both of them are doing because sometimes you can see where one or the other ruler may be having a stronger influence, maybe taking charge and that can inform uh, a chart reading or analysis. I found it to be very, very beneficial uh, to do that. Now, in this case, our two rulers were squaring each other, uh, creating tension, creating a crisis point for us to deal with. Um, so this new moon is really interesting. It suggests potentially a loss of access to a partner's resources or a block or delay of access to others' resources. Something, you know, like a, a business loan or something of, of those sorts of things where you need access to resources that you don't have. And access is not going to be forthcoming, at least not in the moment when you really need it. It might come later. But by then, the immediate need, it will be too late to address or to meet. So the way this chart reads is that taking this loss, dealing with this loss, addressing the current situation right now is the only path forward in this moment, that the only way out is through, really. Uh, it does suggest that there's potentially a possibility for disappointment around the manifesting of a long-held hope or dream. Uh, there's a risk of destabilization in friendships or a destabilization in business income, destabilization in uh, social activities, uh, social events even. Uh, and that behind the scenes activities may help secure access to whatever these resources are you need. They might secure the funding that you need or whatever the needed resources are, or potentially that behind the scenes activities, private negotiations, things like that might influence uh, some sort of financial planning, like estate planning or wills or other investments, things like that. Uh, and then finally, this new moon, uh, proffers us an opportunity for relaxation, an opportunity for some much needed self care. And I would encourage you to take advantage of that. It's not often we get, you know, <laughs> permission from the solar system to engage in that. And we have that right now in the days, uh, just in the aftermath of this new moon. So, uh, take advantage, take some time out for self care. Now coming up in a couple of days, well, actually no, today, uh, we have the sun entering Pisces. Uh, March 15th, that is through mid-April. The sun's going to sextile Pluto tomorrow. And so that sextile to Pluto is going to mark this transit of the sun through Pisces. So your Pisces house, wherever that's located in your sidereal natal chart, that house is what's going to be highlighted in these coming four weeks. You may encounter themes around faith, around spiritual matters, around your unconscious beliefs escapism, selfless service, and or self-sacrifice. And this particular uh, transit of the sun through Pisces is an opportunity to transform a belief. It's an opportunity to be influential, to stand in your power or to reclaim your power in some way. Uh, it's a time for you to act on a commitment or an obligation or a responsibility Although I would encourage you to hold off potentially on career or professional actions, there's a risk of, of disappointment or damage to reputation or status uh, if you were to take action uh, towards career or professional things too soon under this transit. So just kind of hold off a little bit. Um, we have Venus about to enter Pisces as well in just a few days coming up on March the 17th. And then she's going to sextile Pluto the day after she moves into Pisces. So we kind of have the sun and Venus. Uh, they're so close to each other right now because we are coming up on a sun-Venus conjunction on the 26th. They're kind of doing this dance 
where they make the same aspects shortly after each other. Uh, and it's, it's like an echo, almost like a reverberation, if you will. So Venus's tour through Pisces, which begins on March 17th, this is going to put Venus in her exaltation, which is nice, but there is a potential for a public setback bound up with this transit. Now, with Venus being exalted, the consequence may not be major. That setback may not be a big, big deal, but it's still a possibility. Um, if it's not a big, big deal, it will be because of Venus's role as the minor benefic being in her exaltation. So it would be that she's offering some measure of protection due to her status. But just be aware, there's a possibility, there's a potential for some sort of public setback bound up in Venus's transit of Pisces, even though she will be in her exaltation. Um, this is a time when you can really expect relationships to be transformational or to begin transformational relationships. Encounters with foreigners, with foreign cultures, or travel can influence or transform your personal values in these coming weeks while Venus is in Pisces. And business travel and higher education are favored during this time. So if you have the opportunities to do business travel, be safe. Uh, try to get your vaccinations uh, in before you go. If you can, if not, I would encourage you to take all necessary precautions while you travel, double mask, do whatever's necessary. Um, if you have the opportunity to uh, engage in some continuing education, uh, jump on that because anything new that you can learn that you can add to your repertoire or experience or skill set will benefit you during this time. Okay. And then on the 21st, Mars goes out of bounds. Now, this is kind of an interesting day. The 21st, Mars goes out of bounds and Mercury will sextile Uranus. So we have these two uh, bits of planetary activity kind of combining at the same time. Now, Mars is going to be out of bounds in Taurus. Let's talk just for a moment about out of bounds and what that means in general. So when a planet moves out of bounds, and keep it in mind, the sun we don't consider ever to go out of bounds. So it's mostly the planets that we're talking about. The sun is what demarcates where the bounds are, right? And that is the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn, right? These are the upper and lower northern latitude and southern latitude limits of the sun's path north and south of the equator that we experience seasonally as we rotate around the sun in our orbit throughout the year. So when a planet moves beyond 23 degrees, 27 minutes, north or south declination, they're beyond the parameters of the sun's travel, and they're considered to be out of bounds. And you can kind of liken out of bounds behavior of a planet to, there's an expression in the English language, beyond the pale. And it really encapsulates this concept of things that are outside of what's considered socially acceptable. When something is beyond the pale, it is beyond the parameters of what's considered socially acceptable. And so that's really kind of this same dynamic when a planet, the sun here de defines socially acceptable and when a planet moves beyond the path of the sun during the course of a year they're no longer governed by the same rules they're no longer reined in by the same parameters by the same expectations okay so when this happens with Mars, of course, when it happens with any planet, the expression of this beyond the pale type of kind of outrageous marching to the beat of your own drum kind of maverick behavior, well, it's defined, the qualities of it 
are defined by what planet we're talking about in a given situation. When we're talking about Mars being out of bounds, what we're talking about is a tendency to become much more headstrong in our behavior, much more driven, much more ambitious than usual. Okay, our courage can run a lot higher. Remember, Mars is about courage, right? It's about bravery. So we can be much more willing to be brave and courageous than we might otherwise be. But we can also be far more self-centered. We can be far more impulsive. And we can be overly aggressive, much more so than we might normally be. So out of bounds planets express their best and worst behaviors. It's a very extreme expression of planetary energy. It's not this middle of the road, middle ground kind of stuff. It's very extreme. But it can be the extreme bad, the extreme negative, or it can be the extreme positive, right? So it can be our highest expression or our lowest expression. And this is where it's important to know because if you understand what's coming, Uh, You can kind of have an antenna up for the risks, the drawbacks, the pitfalls, and you can put more conscious intention into channeling that energy into a productive and beneficial uh, path for yourself, right? So out of bounds, Mars is likely to influence us to overreact in rash and perhaps uncharacteristically violent ways. That's a potential negative expression of it, right? We might pick fights unprovoked. We might overreact in anger. So be aware of this tendency and cultivate patience and compassion for yourself and for other people. Because keep in mind, this is not just affecting the people around you. It's affecting you too. So be extra compassionate with yourself. Try to be more patient with yourself, which I know can be difficult because we're talking about Mars here, right? Uh, Try to practice forgiving and forgetting if you can. Now, this influence is going to last until late May. So we've got more than two months worth of being under the influence of Mars out of bound. Okay. Mars will return from out of bounds travel on the 24th of May. Um, With this particular transit of Mars out of bounds. So that's just like Mars out of bounds in general. With this particular Mars out of bounds transit, this is an opportunity to take action on a commitment or responsibility. So we talk about being more ambitious and more driven than usual. Channel that into this. Um, Keep your activities private, uh, at least initially. And just know that with this Mars out of bounds transit, speaking your mind could result in a loss of status or a hit to your reputation. So try to rein in that urge to speak your mind, okay? Or at least stop and think about the words you're about to use before you speak your mind. Don't just do it impulsively. And uh, the other thing to be aware of is that surprise news or unexpected messages or information could come up around this time of Mars going out of bounds on the 21st. And that's related to the Mercury uh, sextile uh, Uranus aspect that's taking place on the same day, right? The very next day, March 22nd, we have Mars trining Saturn. And that's an opportunity for wealth and income building. It's an opportunity to put uh, focus and energy into paring down your possessions or paring down or streamlining your expenses. Okay, getting back to the basics financially, building a solid financial foundation, right? Business and partnership negotiations might be on the table near that date, March 22nd. We might not be seeing eye to eye with a partner. So keep that in mind. Uh, We're going to have on the 24th, so just a few days into Mars's out-of-bound travel, this date, just have an eye on it. This one kind of makes me a little bit nervous. We're going to have Mercury square Mars. 
as Mars is just getting underway with this out of bounds travel. And that's kind of a risky thing because squares, of course, are crisis points, right? They're, they create tension. Mercury's about communication and dialogue. Mars is the planet of conflict and he's going to be misbehaving because he's out of bounds. So this is kind of a risky day. This day and I would say the day before and after. Do your best to keep your cool. Meditate extra if you need to. Schedule some private time by yourself. Do things uh line up activities that might help you blow off steam if you need to because conflicts are possible uh on this day conflicts uh, especially with employees or staff for those of you who have them there's potential for scheduling conflicts for just busy schedules or uh busyness around commute or travel activity there's a possibility of transportation hiccups so be careful of those things um, be careful of that risk for arguments with those two squaring off while Mars is out of bounds. Because remember, the tendency to pick fights unprovoked and to overreact in anger is stronger when Mars is out of bounds. And when he's squared a Mercury, we could really see tensions flare up. Okay. We have, and I didn't date this. Why didn't I put the dates in? Sun conjunct Venus. That is March 26th. And then the other one here I see coming up that we're about to talk about, the full moon in Virgo. I didn't put a date there either. That is March 28th, the day of our next broadcast. All right. So sun conjoining Venus. This is fun. And I'm enjoying that this once yearly occurrence is taking place while Venus is in exaltation. I'm really getting a kick out of that. Uh, it what it says to me is that this is the unconditional love transit, right? Because Venus, she's the planet of love, but she's in her exaltation in the sign that epitomizes selfless service and self sacrifice. Which to me, because it's Pisces, Pisces is a water sign ruled by Neptune. So we're talking about something that is boundless. It's almost the opposite of of well not quite the opposite but kind of the opposite of Saturn because Saturn is bound right Saturn is about limitations and boundaries well Pisces is not <laughs> Pisces is the boundless Pisces is you could ineffable is a good word to use to describe Pisces you cannot necessarily put limits on it because you can't necessarily see it clearly you can't necessarily peg it down there's this beautiful nebulous kind of quality about Piscean energy um, and to me what that says is unconditional love love without conditions love without bounds love without restrictions love without qualifiers and quantifiers which is not necessarily the kind of love that most of us are used to, right? So this is a beautiful transit. And if you have the opportunity to do something with a lover or partner this day, do it if you can. It's also an opportunity. Um, and I think this is kind of important. It's an opportunity to let go of something that you love. Because it's what's best. Because sometimes doing the thing we don't want to do is the highest expression of our love, right? Uh, let go of something you love because it's what's best, either because it's what's best for you or because it's what's best for them or the thing or whatever it is you're letting go of. Although in all likelihood, it's probably what's best for both, right? Um, spend time in a sanctuary, create your own sanctuary on this day. Or if you have a place that is your personal secret sanctuary, spend some time beautifying it. Um, this is an opportunity to confess your feelings to a secret love, if you have one, to make a commitment, or perhaps to prepare to take a new relationship public once Venus changes signs into Aries. Okay. March 26th. Lovely day. Uh, the 28th, we have the full moon in Virgo. 
Uh, Mercury, of course, ruling Virgo. Mercury will be in Aquarius for that uh, particular transit. Uh, he's going to be applying conjunct to Neptune, and that is the strongest aspect that he has going on at that full moon. Um, the way that chart reads, it suggests that there has already been action taken or a battle has already been fought. And here we are in the aftermath of it. Um, it's, it suggests an opportunity to allow a genuine desire for love and harmony to guide the outcome. And full moons usually bring endings. And like we were talking about just a few days before with the sun conjoining Venus, it's an opportunity to let go of something. So it may be that uh, if the battle's already been fought, uh, you've reached the end, it's time to let go of something. Um, let it go in that space of being desirous of harmony. Let it go in that space of letting it go is what's best for everyone involved. Okay. And as you do, because that's the full moon, that's when we do our releasing practice. So as you do your releasing practice for that coming full moon in Virgo, consider adding the verbiage to your releasing practice statement that you're letting it go in a way that's for the highest good of all involved. And that will ensure you've covered all bases on the equation, right? Uh, that whatever transpires, whatever ending uh, may be coming about with the full moon in Virgo, that it's an ending that is in the service of your highest good and the highest good of whatever it is you're letting go of or who, right? It's also a full moon with opportunity for discussion around shared dreams or making dreams a reality together. Um, there's a strong signature for idealization with this new moon without applying conjunction to Neptune. Okay. Just be wary that Neptune can also be the significator for uh, disappointment. Okay. Lack of clarity dreaminess, pie in the sky, right? So try to balance that with a little dose of reality given that the moon's in Virgo, okay? Now, looking ahead, on April 1st, Mercury's going to move into Pisces. Jupiter is going to move into Aquarius on April 10th. Mars is going to move into Gemini on April 15th. And then we're going to have our final Sun-Mercury conjunction in this series of three on April 18th. So a lot more to talk about coming up in the next broadcast. We'll go over all that and more in the next Sidereal Insights Astro Update coming up on March 28th at 1.30 Mountain Time. We hope we'll get this one off on time without hiccups. Cross your fingers for me, please. And then I just want to throw out a few announcements for those of you who maybe haven't caught uh, some of the recent broadcasts. This is all available now in podcast format. So if you're much more of a podcast listener than a video watcher, you can go check out uh, the new podcast at anchor.fm slash mystic physic, and you can listen through any of your favorite podcasting platforms. Uh, I invite you to uh, follow Mystic Physic on social media. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter. Uh, please subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel. You can also click the notification bell and that way you get notified whenever I upload a new video. And remember, you can now catch us on Patreon and sign up to support the broadcast at one of three support levels and get exclusive access to goodies just for Patreon supporters. And don't forget, if you haven't ordered your 2021 Ultimate Astrological Planner, those are available at the website right now. You can just visit mysticphysic.com 2021 to view the entire collection. And I want to thank you all for watching today. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye.